Dyson spheres are hypothetical artificial megastructures built around a star to collect all of its radiant energy. The first science fiction novel to examine such a structure was called Star Maker by Olaf Stapledon in 1937. In 1960, physicist Freeman Dyson explored it in a paper called Search for Artificial Stellar Sources of Infrared Radiation. He speculated that such structures would be the logical consequence of the escalating energy needs of a technological civilization and would be a necessity for its long-term survival. Detecting a Dyson sphere could be a way to find a technologically advanced alien civilization. This structure needn't be a solid structure. It could be a swarm of structures. A variation of the Dyson sphere is a single circular band that we find in Larry Niven's Ringworld, 1970. The 10th book in the A Science Fiction Special Series 2, Orbitsville, by Bob Shaw, 1975. Orbitsville is a Dyson sphere. This megastructure wonder is the locale for much of this novel. Vance Garamond is a star pilot. Earth's ecology is crumbling. The heir to a dynasty of companies has set up a palatial palace in Iceland. The matriarch of this family is Elizabeth Lindstrom. Garamond is visiting before departing on a trip. In chapter one, a very unfortunate accident occurs and Vance Garamond flees the palace. He gathers up his wife and son, heads to his spaceship and blasts away from Earth. Lindstrom is enraged and wants revenge against Garamond. Garamond's ship and crew have been tasked with finding new worlds. So far, there is only one new Earth-type planet. Elizabeth Lindstrom's company has a monopoly on that planet. There is a theory that she really doesn't want to find another planet because she doesn't want to lose this monopoly. Garamond has a theory. There's been a planet found that used to have intelligent life. Where are they? Is there a world that they've gone to? As he seeks this alien race, he finds a Dyson Sphere. The enormity of this megastructure is hard to fathom. The novel is about exploration and revelation. It is about plotting revenge and trying to avoid the inevitable. There are some amazing scenes of action that you will not believe. There's also times of mind-numbing boredom in the magnitude of the Dyson Sphere. The novel's motor is this unfortunate accident in chapter one and the resulting chase for revenge. This cat and mouse game leads to an even larger real estate battle in a Dyson sphere. I really enjoy the first half to two thirds of this novel. I do have to admit though, there's a few head scratching moments as I try to understand the science behind what is happening. This is more space opera than space science. The last third of the novel drags. I don't want to reveal why because I want to keep the spoilers to a minimum here. And the ending itself was very rushed. It felt like Bob Shaw had these great ideas and was executing them, but lost steam and then tried to just quickly wrap things up. I don't think he was originally planning any sequels, but there are sequels. The novel won the British Science Fiction Award for best novel. In 1983, we got Orbitsville Departure, the second novel of a trilogy. And in 1990, we have Orbitsville Judgment. When reading Orbitsville, we had a start that was right out of Pulp SF. Think perhaps A.E. Van Vogt, or even Alfred Bester. Then we move on to Arthur C. Clarke's Rendezvous with Rama, with a big, dumb object. And finally, Larry Niven's ring world. Although there is no ring, it is an entire sphere. If you're looking for satisfactory explanations, you're not going to find a lot in this novel. There's speculation about the sphere itself and why it was built, but we don't discover a lot about the engineering of it. Bob Shaw's ingenuity and wit is present, but I don't think it's as satisfying as it has been in his earlier novels. I give Orbitsville 6.5 out of 10. Now, I haven't read 
Orbitsville departure or Orbitsville judgment. So I don't know if some of these things are revealed later on. But as I stated, I don't think he planned to make further novels at the conclusion of this one. What are your thoughts? Which is your favorite big dumb object novel? Have you read Orbitsville? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.